Oh. Okay. My assistant, Hardy White, the third, also known as Lord Gaylord. All right, so now I'm going to start a easy workout, very gentle. Well, that's all relative, isn't it? Deep stretch, arms and legs away from center. And I'm going to bend and just roll just a quarter of the way up. And inhale, get long, and exhale. Kitty needs some love. In the last video, I didn't pay any attention to him, and he ended up walking all around. So he's in here, little assistant. Getting some lipstick on the back of his head. And since I've got the kitty, I'm just going to change into these big arm circles. Inhaling, stretching away from center. Exhale, come up. Inhaling, opening. Exhale. So again, these are working with, I just did a shoulder rolling with the balls to get some of a stuck tissue out of the back of my shoulders. Then changing the direction, exhaling up, inhale, open, exhale, and inhale, exhale, and inhale, one more, exhale, and inhale. And now I think I'm going to have to dislodge my assistant, see how that happens. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Oh. I'm just going to do, let's do it slow then since he's staying on board. Just easy release on one side uh, and then bring it back up and then release on the other side and come back up and then going for full knee drops, just side side. So I'm using a spiral, a twist as a recuperation from that sagittal forward backward moment, movement. Easy knee drops. This is about relaxing and letting go of these knee drops and just opening up hips and lower back, letting go. And then from there, we're going to do some really basic for it, pre-thigh lift. Mine is a little more active than it might be if I was working a little more somatically, really with just what needs to happen. But I feel like I need to move my muscles a little bit. So I'm just sliding out, flex my foot, and then sliding it back in. Sliding it out, letting my weight fall onto the floor, finding a flex, feeling the connection of that leg all the way up into my body through my psoas. And one more on the side, and then the other side. So this is a pretty simple workout because I woke up with a migraine this morning. Ha! Ah, trying to relax my jaw, soften in my neck and shoulders as I'm doing this workout. So sometimes when you're working one area of the body, a tension pattern comes in somewhere else. So I'm trying to just release as much as I can. One more of these. And then I'm just going to go with some regular, these are thigh lifts. This is a Bartania Fundamental. The idea is that you are not gripping and engaging everything, but you're just relaxing, letting go. And when I learned it, it was really about engaging the psoas to lift the leg. However, I think using the whole body together to do it so everything's working a little bit and nothing is working too much might be a better way of doing it. So the idea is that you're going to keep a neutral pelvis. Neutral pelvis means pubic bone, hip bones are equidistant from the floor. Here's a tuck. Here's an arch. I might be a little teeny bit tucked right now, but whatever. And then I'm going to roll this up, and I'm just going to have a little more freeform movement, opening my arms out and moving my pelvis from side to side. As I'm moving my pelvis from side to side, I'm letting my head move from side to side. This doesn't have to be high. It doesn't have to be low. Work in a position that feels good in your body. And that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to circle, big circles. And as I'm circling, I'm actually letting my head and spine move kind of in opposition. You can see if you look that it's going from one side to the other. So that I'm trying to work the wholeness pattern of my body. I'm not trying to just isolate one part because that's actually impossible anyway. But I'm trying to work my body in a way that the whole thing is working together in the most kinesthetic way, the most optimal. So I'm not driving the car with the brakes on. I'm just doing what I need to do. Ha, good.
Good, a little bit more warmed up there. So now I'm gonna adapt the thigh lift to get a little bit more into my hamstrings, lifting my pelvis up, trying to get my hips so that they're in between my shoulders and my knees, and then one leg at a time, just up, knee is bent, it's very easy, although this bottom half is working. Just getting the back of the body warmed up. So hamstrings, a little bit of glutes, back working. I can feel the blood going into my head as my pelvis is higher than my head. That's the beauty of gravity and blood. Your blood is watery, so it pools downwards. So if I'm laying here, the water is going down this way in my body. If I lay on my side, water going that way. On my stomach, water going down. It's called gravity. It's one of the ways that the earth and the gravitational pull move with us. So I'm just doing a little bit of free movement because it feels good to me. I need to wake up my body and listen into what's going on. If I do the same pattern all the time, I'm not going to hear very much. So a little bit of wah, freedom, opening up. I'm also feeling this need to be in my stomach right now. I don't know why, but I'm going to... Oh, just move around with that. So I feel like we've learned most of our fitness ideas from the military, from athletics, from dance. Those are all pretty rigid forms. If we start to learn a little bit more about movement from babies, we might be a little bit more youthful in our tissue and in our movement. So this is my adult version of baby development. <laughs> it's pretty developed because I can work across my body and I am actually an adult but trying to find exploratory playful movement so that mm, I can just play into what feels good and it probably is going to look really weird if you're used to really codified rigid movement like this but I think that the both sides of that equation are valuable it's nice to have really form-based movement where we all understand what's going on. I'm going back into it. But the free movement is where you're going to learn more about your own body. In the free movement, and you're also going to hydrate tissue, ligaments, joints, things that don't get the hydration when you're working in the more two and two-dimensional sort of planar movements. Ah, so I like to try to make my exercises balance between exercises that go up versus upper versus lower, exercises that go working across the body, exercises that do one versus the other, exercises that are working the back or working the front. And all of this, my foundation for my learning is from Lama movement analysis. So let's go back into a little bit more form-based movement, deep breath, exhale. Inhale, open. Exhale, closed. Inhale. Stretch and reach it long. Exhale up. Inhale, big arm circle. Exhale. Inhale, stretch and lengthen. Oh, even in the stretching and lengthening, I feel a lot of stuff going on in my neck and shoulders. It's extra, extra tension. I would like to release it. So I'm going to see if even in this movement, I can soften it down, coming into a kind of lighter and freer space. So I'm not trying to uh, muscle at all. I'm trying to really move as easily as possible. In movement analysis, we have effort factors. Free flow versus bound flow. Free flow is very childlike and playful and sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Unpredictable. Whereas bound flow is usually very specific, it's easily stopped, much more sort of adult, much more constrained and constricted. If you think of water, like a river, that's a lot of free flow. <laughs> you put it into ice, pretty bound flow. It's not moving. We might say that there's no flow there. So that's one of the effort factors. We also have weight, which would be lightweight, which has a tendency to rise strong weight, which has a tendency to come down. And those are aligned with this up and down, the vertical dimension, up and downness. 
And then we have direct space and indirect space. I'm not going to get into that right now. And quick time and sustained time. So time that speeds up and time that slows down. So a lot of these factors, if we can use them in our workout. For example, if I work with changes of time, I can go fast and then sustain, slow it down. Fast, open, sustain. I'm making it easier by going fast. So I'm using my arms really to bring me up. And I'm trying to find a sense of lightness as I open, letting my shoulders and neck release. And then I'm going to roll through that and feel the coffee slushing around inside my belly. And I'm just going to flip onto hands and knees. And here, I'm, to get into this space again between my shoulders, I'm just going to move from one side to the other, shifting my weight, letting my head drop. And this I'm just making up as I go along, considering what feels good to my body right now. And then easy cat cow. I'm just going to take a little bit of time here, shifting forward and backward. Slowing down. And the same thing here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with the pattern of cat-cow, of arching and curling, but I'm not going to make it go just like this. I'm going to let it ripple and wave a little bit. So I'm initiating from different places. And I'm letting the sort of watery fluid nature of my body take over a little bit, hopefully. If all goes well, that's what's happening. Uh, kitty! And I'm just going to add a, a stretch up here, opening up. And while I'm stretching up there, I'm pushing down into the bottom. And I'm going to add a little arch, opening, 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 and then release it down. Same thing on the other side. See, that's the one beauty of form-based movement, is that you're going to pretty much usually use it evenly on each side. And when I say form-based, I mean exercises that have a definite right way and a definite wrong way. The freedom-based exercises that are more exploratory, there really isn't a whole lot of right and wrong. You're just listening into yourself. Uh-oh, Kitty wants to play. He's been very patient all morning. So, just a couple more things here. Let me get onto my belly. I'm going to do, this is actually an exercise I learned from Irene Dowd. I may have changed it since I learned it from her quite a long time ago. I'm going to drop my head, roll it down, looking for my pubic bone, and then pubic bone drops, rolls up through my spine, inhale, lift, and I'm going to lift my legs. I don't think she does it that way. Head drops, rolling down through the spine, pelvis lifts, and then pelvis drops, rolling up, arching. And you can think of almost pushing backwards here. And then pulling forward and through. Oh, I just adjusted something in my spine. Pulling back and then forward and through and one more. Rolling back and forward and through. And then onto my side. Hmm. I'm going to do a stretch. And I'm going to do the stretch, which is probably going to be a little bit higher than maybe you might be doing, you might be here. But a while ago, like maybe six months ago, over the summer, I was doing a show and I think I just injured my hamstrings a little bit. They've been tight and tighter ever since. So I just want to see if I can work out that tissue, lengthening it out. So I'm just kind of pumping it, going for a lengthen and then release. Oh. And then on the other side, we're just going to turn around because I'm too lazy. And this could be right here. You could do it there. And I'm not really trying to straighten my bottom leg. I'm just seeing what's going on in the insertion of my hamstring into my sit bones. That's where I really feel it. Uh, and if I turn it out a little bit more, that's turned in, that's turned out. 
Oh, it's interesting to just play in that space. This is the one actually that's the worst one, which used to be my more flexible leg, so who knows. And then shake it all out. Let everything come back in. I'm just going to finish it off with this side side stretch which will eventually go into a circle and a hip stretch. So this is a little short workout, a very easy, soft, well for me, <laughs> soft in my body workout. Better to work your body or at least move it more often at a lower impact than just going balls to the walls for an hour every few days. More movement, more often. Super important for your body. Stillness is the smoking. Stillness is the new smoking. Stillness and Coca-Cola. If you drink soda, get over it. <laughs> One of my clients said that. Sugar is the new smoking, but I think stillness is also the new smoking. This really releases my hips and my back right in here. And if I'm not teaching classes, I usually don't do this movement at all. So I find it really helps to be doing something with other people where I get into all these moves. All right, this has been Laura Victoria Ward and Lord Gaylord Hardy White III. I'm probably out of focus now. Thanks for watching.